know, everybody gets heartburn every once in a while, but it's also the most common symptom associated with gastroesophageal reflux disease, also known as GERD. Sometimes the symptoms of GERD can manifest as chest pain or even back pain. Studies suggest that over one-third of patients who experienced chest pain were actually experiencing symptoms caused by GERD. According to Healthline.com, 60% of the adult population will experience some type of gastroesophageal reflux disease within a 12-month period, and 20-30% to will have weekly symptoms. The specialists at Advanced Gastroenterology and Surgery Associates explain what GERD is and how they treat it. The most common condition we see in men, I think, would most likely be uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, um, especially with increase in obesity. Um, we're seeing more and more cases of acid reflux. And, and the other reason it's important in men is that there's rising esophageal adenocarcinoma of the esophagus uh, through a condition called Barrett's esophagus, and it's much more common in men than in women. So anyone who has a chronic history of acid reflux should probably have an endoscopy to to look to make sure they don't have this change in the lining of the esophagus which, which uh, resembles the stomach. It actually is a motility disorder. People normally think that it's, it's just acid, but it's just reflux of gastric contents into the esophagus that causes the symptoms. So it really is a motility problem. It's a problem of reflux. We all have transient relaxation of the muscle at the end of the esophagus, which, so we all get a little bit of reflux if we eat a pizza or Fried, you know, fat, fried foods, fatty foods, you get a little bit of reflux. But some people get it much more often. People with hiatal hernias, where part of the stomach is slid up into the chest, uh, tend to be more prone to get acid reflux and they tend to have more significant problems. But it really is a motility disorder. And the medications, however, that we have actually just control the acid. They, they don't really um, prevent the reflux of gastric contents. That's why the anti-reflux measures, elevating the head of the bed, you know, avoiding lying down postprandially, avoiding some types of food, some medications, um, are, are vitally important because you really have no great motility drugs uh, to treat acid reflux. Cough is one of the extra esophageal manifestations of acid reflux. So people can reflux uh, gastric contents all the way up the esophagus, can present with hoarseness. As a matter of fact, most of those patients actually are seen initially by an ENT physician and they would subsequently refer to a gastroenterologist when they do a laryngoscopy and see a lot of erythema of the vocal cords. Uh, it's usually for massive reflux. It can present with asthma uh, because of bronchospasm. It has to do how the motility of the esophagus is. So in um, conditions where the esophagus does not function well to clear the acid when it is refluxed up, that's one. The intra-abdominal uh, press, uh, pressure is very important as well. For example, eating large amount of food at the same time causes the stomach to distend. So therefore, it causes acid to reflux up. It also has to do with the anatomy. So for example, if at the end of the esophagus is the lower esophageal sphincter, if that for one reason or another is quote unquote loose, then acid can reflux a lot easier. I think it's mostly lifestyle. Um, like everything else, there probably could be some genetic components, but it's so common. And like I said before, we all reflux to a certain extent. Um, I think it's it, lifestyle sort of exacerbates it. For more information, as well as the testing and treatment options offered at AGSA, please click the Get Rid of GERD Storylink icon on our homepage, yourhometownhealth.com.